Hello everyone, and welcome to my equipment guide for Liddy. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over the best traits for her, the best recipes for her right now, the best recipes for her coming in the future, and I'll also do just a quick little showcase of how to synthesize gear for her. Uh, the reason I'm making this video, I know a lot of people are wondering about, you know, what's best for Liddy, but also I think it's not super straightforward. She's kind of the first character we have that really is demanding some super specialized gear that you probably haven't made so far. Um, not just like skill power and stun stuff, but some some things that are a little bit different. So let's just dive right into it. And we will start off with the traits. So I'm gonna go here. And the most important trait for Liddy is this enhanced damage buff A. Uh, this is the trait you want on every single piece of gear for her. It comes on three different materials. Um, and what it does is it boosts the potency of damage buffs given to attackers by up to 50% at level five. Uh, one copy of this trait at level five will take the dam skill damage buff from her skill two to 30% from 20%. Two copies will take it to 40%. And at three copies, her skill damage buff on her skill 2 will be giving a whopping 50% skill damage instead of the base 20% that it would give normally without any gear. Uh, that's huge. That is a massive damage increase for your attackers. It's really, really, really good. Um, also, it affects the burst as well. Uh, the burst is a bit harder to use, but that 100% skill damage will scale up to 250% with three of the traits. Now, this is a material only trait which means you can only get one copy of it on each piece of your gear. It's not on any characters uh, and you have to get it from the material. So when you're making Liddy gear, you will almost always be using one of these three materials in your synthesis. Uh, the first material it's on is the Lake Master with air damage boost. This material is green. It comes from Breezy Waterside. You probably will not be using this. Uh, green is hard to use in Liddy synth and the air damage boost just isn't useful. So. This one's mostly a skip. The second material is the Red Hot Crystal. This is probably the material you'll be using most often, and it comes from the Chapter 5 Dungeon Dragon's Peak. Um, it has Enhanced Damage Buff A on it, and it also has Recovery Boost D. And while Recovery Boost D isn't an amazing trait for Liddy, uh, you want more generic Recovery Boosts as the second trait, it's still useful. So a useful second trait is better, is better than a not useful second trait, of course. And it's also yellow. It's very easy. Uh, there's a really good synth path that includes this item. So you will probably be using mostly this item when synthesizing with Liddy. And then we also have the unknown Augite. And this comes from Cloyster. This one is blue. Uh, Augite's really nice because it links directly with Liddy. Liddy's colors are purple blue. So, um, and you always want to be using Liddy when making gear for Liddy uh, because her trait is really good. Augite links directly to her, so Augite is not bad. Um, its second trait is this Enhanced Physical Magical Resistance Up. This trait is not directly good for Liddy herself, but it is good for characters like Linka and Lent, and you normally wouldn't be synthesizing with this. So, you know, if you happen to get gear with level 5 with this trait while using an Augite, it still has uses, not a lot of uses, but it still can be used for certain things, so it's not a terrible second trait, right? It's not awful, but I do recommend mostly to be using the Red Hot Crystal, and I will show later how you use it in a synthesis with Liddy. Um, the other traits you care about for Liddy, the only other traits you really care about are recovery traits for the secondary trait. They are less important than Enhanced Damage Buff A, but they are still good. Um, good to have. And you really do want Liddy to have good healing, so you do want healing traits. It's just that the damage buff trait is more important. So for the secondary trait, you can go for a recovery boost. This one's fine. You know, 15% recovery boost. All recovery boost. Um, this is the best one where it boosts the HP recovery of area healing to 20 by 25%. Um, this is the trait that Liddy herself gives. So you might end up with this on a lot of your Liddy gear alongside damage buff A. And then we also have Recovery Boost Resolve. Now, this isn't on any characters, so you probably won't have this on most of the Liddy gear, but this is, in my opinion, the one of the better uh, healing traits, where it boosts recovery given by 40% when HP is 50% or lower. So when you need the recovery most, it gets a large boost to it. And 
you normally won't have this trait on Liddy because it's only on items, I believe. However, notably, it does come on the Polypore Shroom along with all target attack resistance up. So if you happen to need a more defensive Liddy for hard content such as Affinity Tower, where, you know, she is dying so you need area defense to keep her alive, um, you get area defense and resolve recovery on this item. So you won't be able to get damage buff A on items using Polypore Shroom, but if you do need gear to keep her alive, specifically in hard content, this is a fantastic material to go along with that because it has two very, very good traits for her. Um, but yeah, basically enhanced damage buff A, highest priority. You want this at level five on every piece. And then whatever recovery trait you can get as the secondary trait is a good thing. Um, and let's just go on to the gear. I will start with weapons first, move on to armor and then accessories. As far as weapons go, the best weapon right now is the event limited weapon steel staff from the alchemist of salberg event um the steel staff it's cheap it's easy to make it's magic attack focused and while equipped to a supporter it boosts the potency of buff effects given by 10 percent now this isn't super amazing but it is useful so it's still good to have um it will basically boost her skill damage buff from 20% to 22%. Now, because we're getting so much from the traits, you know, up to 50%, this will bring that to like 52%. So it's not a huge boost, but it is still something, right? It's still somewhat useful. So best weapon for her right now. It's also magic attack focused. Um, she is a magic healer um, with a recovery power. Magic attack will scale that recovery. So it's good to have magic attack for her. To make her recovery better because the recovery on her is important as well if you are out of materials or you don't have this recipe because it is event limited there are other options um there is the stylish broom which is the same thing with a smaller buff effect value however its materials are rather expensive uh, getting all these spikies and sustaining them costs a lot of stamina because you need 15 of them. And also the SSR rate is quite bad because it is an extra one recipe. Basically, this weapon is viable. However, I wouldn't recommend making it for her um, because it's so expensive. In fact, if you don't have the steel staff, my recommendation is just whatever cheap magic attack weapons you happen to have. So something like the princess wand even though the effect isn't very good, it's cheap, it has magic attack, you can spam it. I would personally make something like this if I didn't have access to the steel staff. Um, there is also the beginner staff, which this is the weapon intended for Liddy from the current event. Don't make this. This item is atrociously bad. Um, it uses up your event limited materials, these star flowers, for an item that just isn't good. Basically, what it does while equipped to a supporter after using a skill, it boosts the received recovery on the target by 4% for one turn. So the order of operations here is that, you know, Liddy takes a turn, she heals, so the heal goes off, and then it applies the buff. So the buff doesn't apply to the heal because the he buff comes after the heal. Then, you know, your attacker or whoever the buff is on takes their turn and the buff falls off and they haven't received another heal yet. And then Liddy heals again with no buff up. So... It's very hard to make this effect work. Um, it's very difficult to actually make it matter at all towards the healing. And then on top of that, even if you have managed to make it work in some way, either with another healer or a healing item or something like that, it's just not very good. Um, it, Im it increases the received recovery by 4%, which isn't 4% of max HP. It's a 4% increase over the current healing. So let's say the heal is for 100, it'll boost that to 104, right? It's not very good. Um, and the reason why you wouldn't want to make this is because the Bloody Claws, which use the same event limited material, the Starflowers, are the best in slot weapon for strike attackers and strike characters in general. This weapon is super, super, super good and doesn't really get power crept in the future. So why would you waste the materials on an, on a really bad item when you could use them on a really good item, right? So yeah, I don't recommend making this. Make kind of like anything else. Uh, it's not very good. However, going into armor, we do have the Parasling Clothes from the same event. 
Um, and these are actually good. Uh, it's basically the same effect, you know, while equipped to supporter boosts HP recovery given by 4%, but this time it will actually apply to Lady's healing unconditionally, so it's useful. Uh, I definitely recommend spamming this for armor for Liddy. It uses event mats, so it's super cheap, super easy to spam, and it's just, it does something. It's solid. It's not bad. Um, definitely recommend making these mostly there are some other armors to mention um but in my opinion they're not super worth it now most of them are in ex1 um for a little bit of context with the half year anniversary ex1 recipe costs will be reduced by like 90 percent or something uh, they are all very expensive right now in the future they become more worth making in my opinion but right now they're not really for the most part um so one notable recipe is the Scholar Coat, which boosts potency of buff effects given by 8%. Um, like I mentioned before, this is a very small value compared to the 150% we already have from traits. So it's not, it, it's like something, but it's not very much. It'll basically give 1.6% skill damage, but the decimal is discarded. So if you don't have another 2% somewhere to make up for that, you know, it's only giving 1% right on that buff. So not super compelling to make this especially with how expensive it is and how bad the ssr rate is i wouldn't recommend making this item right now but it's okay if you want to then we also have the plate vest which is basically exactly the same as the parasling clothes um exact same four percent hp recovery however it's also very expensive but at least it's not event limited uh this becomes a pretty decent item once the material costs go down right um, and yeah, that's about it for armor. There's probably a couple other things, but none of them are like super amazing. And then we have accessories and accessories are pretty awkward right now. Um, there just aren't really any that are like super good or anything. Um, we have things like angel ribbon, which are generically good for damage reduction, angel charm, which is good for supporter damage reduction. King of Thunder Ring, which is good for bolt damage reduction if you have the materials. Um, Perfume, which is resistance. I would say this is generally worse than the Angel Charm, so I don't see any reason to make it. Then we have things like the Quartz Necklace, um, which is pretty good for area defense. But in general, I would be making accessories for speed tuning, and it really just depends on the rest of your team, because right now we just don't have good accessories. But the damage reduction accessories are fine, so, you know, not terrible. Uh, just make whatever you need for speed tuning, though. Most of the effects aren't super impactful uh, on current accessories. If we did get the Halloween event, we would have the Halloween mask, which is quite good, but we don't, so, yeah, there's no real real options there now how about future recipes and i have here i'm going to show the japanese recipes in the future on barrel wisdom uh we have the wand of heavenly blessing now this is a weapon that comes from tower recipes we should get those with chapter six so in a couple banners with izana um this should be in with the chapter six recipes it gives a lot of magic attack and its effect this item's intended for ixil but it actually works for um, any supporters. When you're a supporter, after activating a, after using a skill, it gives all allies fire damage plus six percent for one turn. So this is just another skill uh, skill damage buff to add on to our other skill damage buff. If you have full damage buff A, it'll be another like twenty percent skill damage for your fire characters, right? Um, which is pretty good if you're using like Ryza or Wilba as your attacker. Now this weapon is of course not generically useful, although 95 magic attack is very nice, and you do have to clear up to like floor 10 in Fire Tower to unlock it, but very good if your team is comprised of fire attackers such as Ryza or Wilba. So pretty solid item, just increases the damage that you get from Liddy's skill too. Then we have the Angel Staff. Um, this one is a little, um, I'm only mentioning this one because it's super notable. We're actually not getting this for a couple months. However, when you are a supporter, after using a skill, give critical damage plus 5% to all allies for one turn. And this critical damage also scales with damage buff A. So it'll be 12% crit damage to all allies for one turn. 
um, when you have this weapon equipped. This is absolutely Liddy's best in slot weapon currently on JP, but it, I'm just mentioning it so that you can look out for it in the future. Don't wait for this item to make Liddy gear. Um, this item is not coming for a couple months until we get the Alchemist of Arland event, and we don't even know if we're getting this event because it may end up being considered a seasonal event. So we're not completely sure, but in the future, this is one to look out for when it finally does come. Um, I'm only mentioning it because it is that good. And then onto future armors, we have the Golden Mail. This will be coming with the Ryza event, so the next banner, um, that event. Uh, and when you are a supporter, after activating a skill, give skill damage plus 2% to all allies until the end of one action. And this is a bit better than the Skuller Coat for skill damage because this counts as a buff, so it does scale with your damage buff A, and this will end up being, you know, with three level 5 damage buff A traits, this ends up being an extra 5% skill damage. So it's very decent. Um, not amazing, but not bad for an event armor. So yeah, you will be able to spam, the, spam this. It's probably on a similar level to the Parasling Clothes, however, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, but it is more damage, so it's pretty good. Also, along with Chapter 6, we have the Crimson Armor, and this is basically a stronger version of the Golden Mail, but for Lightning supporters, so or Bolt supporters. So Lydia is specifically a Bolt supporter, um, and it's just 3% instead of 2%. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. And this will be with Chapter 6, once again, so, you know, sometime, like, next month, um, and it's 3% skill damage, pretty good, that'll be 7% with the damage buffet traits, not a bad armor at all. And then the other armors are, um, both tower recipes, so we will get tower recipes soon from clearing Affinity Tower, should also be with Chapter 6, um, this one is okay, it's probably a bit better than the Parasling Clothes for recovery overall, because when you use a skill, it recovers 2% max HP for all allies. It's pretty decent. Um, definitely probably the best recovery option. And then we have the Phantom Heavy Armor, which is 18% buff effect. 18% um, is a very good amount of buff effect, so it's totally fine to like make this for buff effect. However, it still does end up being less skill damage specifically uh, than the Crimson Armor for skill two, um, but it is better for the burst. So I do think the Crimson Leather Armor is better generally, but this one's not terrible. However, it does require clearing like floor 10 of floor like maybe 14, 13 or something of Bolt Tower to unlock. So. This one's not really recommended, but it is notable. And then for accessories, we do have one good accessory coming, the Element Guard. And this is once again another Chapter 6 recipe um, for Bolt supporters, and it gives 15% buff effect. So this will be the best accessory for Liddy. 15% um, buff effect still isn't that much compared to our 150%, but it is not nothing. It is still decent. and. Yeah, it'll be the best accessory we have for boosting that skill damage from her skills. So very solid recipe. And those are all of the upcoming recipes that I think are fairly notable for Liddy. Um, most of them are coming very soon, sometime early next month with Chapter 6, with mostly the Angel Staff being the one that you might have to wait a couple months. So keep, an, keep your eyes peeled for these recipes. Um, but also, if you make good, good gear before they come, like damage buff A at level 5 is still better than any of these specific items, right? So you definitely want to focus traits over item bases, but if you can get good traits on a good item, it's even better. Um, and yeah, let's just go ahead and I will just show really quickly a few of the common synth recipes that you'll be using. So a lot of these items start with purple, which is great for us because you can just put Liddy in right away. Liddy is purple blue. Um, so you just want to put Lydian, and then for your second character, um, you will usually use Aisha if you have her. She gives recovery boost. That's what this is. Uh, I have to show this on my Japanese account because I don't have Lydia on global. Um, Aisha, absolutely fantastic. And from Aisha, you can go straight to the Red Hot Crystal, like I mentioned earlier, wherever that is. And this will work for any item starting with purple. So 
This is a very good synth chain. We have all recovery boost, recovery boost, damage buff A, and defender recovery boost. So four solid traits. You do still want damage buff A over any of the others, but this is very good. If you do not have Aisha, it is fine to just use like Shalicera or someone. Um, like it doesn't really matter. You're not getting anything out of this trait, but she will still connect to the red hot crystal and everyone has her. So you do miss a good trait in the pool, but that is fine. You don't really have any other options, right? Um, and if the item doesn't start with purple, um, basically you just want to find any character with purple on the right side. It doesn't really matter what they give. Um, whoever you have at the highest star level, and then you just go that character into, let's reset the filter, into Liddy, and then into Augite. So this is a much worse synth recipe because you only end up with the area recovery and the damage buff A that are good. But, you know, sometimes you just have to do it this way. Um, but usually most of the supporter items do start with purple, so that's very nice. Um, and in the future, we do have more characters that, you know, have purple on the right side that are useful, that link to Liddy. Like, eventually we get, uh, where is she? We get Nady for free, who has recovery boost. Um, she will be coming after chapter 7, so that's not bad. Um, and she is free. Uh, so we will have her to look forward to in the future. But yeah, that should be about it. Um, let me know if I missed anything. Good luck on good luck to all of you on making your gear for Liddy. I hope it goes great for you. Um, <laughs> one thing that's really nice about Liddy is that you really just need that one trait to get her up and running. Um, and then the recovery traits are like, you know, icing on top, right? Like they're not mandatory, but they feel really good to have boosting or healing. But the most important thing is that damage buff a trait. So yeah, good luck to you all. Hope this video was informative and thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.